Good evening. It's five after and so we are here. So we will start. Hope everybody is doing well today. So before we continue where we left off the last time, um, are there any questions hanging over from what we've covered so far? Everybody's good. Okay, well, I have marked that we left, we, we finished question 15, and now we are picking up at 16. <clears throat> and just in case you didn't notice, um, on many of the questions, there's a page number reference. So if you purchased this book, those are the page numbers that are being referenced. I realized that I had not said that to you before. I picked it up. But Pastor, before you go on, could you um, answer question 14? Where do all four Gospels first intersect? Um, okay, so you, if you have the, do you have the book? Yes, I do. So if you look at page 22. Mm hmm Okay. I cannot look. What is the common... What is... There's one thing that's common for all four Gospels on page 22. About... Okay. Um... Uh, about John the Baptist? Absolutely. Okay. So that's the first place where all four Gospels intersect. Mm -hmm. Now, in John, it's in the first chapter. In right. Luke, it's not till chapter 3. Mm -hmm. In Mark, it's in chapter 1, and in Matthew, it's, it's, it's in chapter 3. Chapter but that's the three. first place, that's okay. the first thing where all four of the Gospels um, actually have the same subject. Right. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So we're going to start at um, 16. Who were the first to pass on to others the good news about Jesus? Uh, John the Baptist. Um, page oh, 15, right? 15. Oh, which one are we doing? 15? We're on question 16. 16, okay. Uh, who was who was the first to pass on by the goodness about Jesus? John the Baptizer. Mm -hmm. 28 and 29. Uh, uh, it was Andrew and Simon. Andrew and Simon. Uh -huh. You look at the bottom of 28 and the top of 29. Oh, okay. One of the two of her, John, and one of them was Andrew. Okay. All right. And 17. Which gospel tells us about the first miracle of Jesus? John. Must be right. Uh -huh. The gospel of John. 
Yeah, I mean, that's evident. That's the only thing that's on page 30. <laughs> oh, I didn't get to it yet, Rich. <laughs> so, uh, page 30. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And so this was this was at the 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 wedding at Cana. Yes. The water into wine. Yes. Which um when I've preached this before, I I um I've always titled that sermon, no matter how I preach it, did you know that Jesus was a party animal? Yes, I it's a, you know something, Pastor? It's the one thing that um um, you and Pastor Taylor agree on, well, speak about that Jesus was a party animal. He always said that. Everybody wanted him at their gathering. That's why they call him Wine Bieber. Call him what? Wine Bieber. And <laughs> <not> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was that was his that was his first that was his first um, miracle was the turning the water into wine and John is the only gospel that tells that story. Yeah. So we just talked about this recently. Um, well, no, we didn't talk about it. I talked about it in a sermon <laughs> recently. Um, why might some readers be uncomfortable with John's account <clears throat> excuse me, of Jesus cleansing the temple? How do you feel about it? Differences among the gospel accounts, are they accidental or intentional? I think, I think they so. were in, intentional. Um, they all. All right. Um, so let's go back to to the be to the beginning. Um, when we when we talked about who the writers were of each gospel and 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 their backgrounds so matthew what's what's matthew's background tax collector he's okay he's jewish he's He's oh, you mean? Oh, oh, so, okay. Matthew was Jewish. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. What else would he have been? Well, she just when, said. When, Ma when Pastor Mark was a Jewish. I didn't say Mark. I said uh, no. I, I was not you. Not you. Not you, sis. I'm not. I, no. I, I was just addressing this to Pastor, not you. So, so okay. In, so okay, Matthew, Matthew was Jewish, okay. and Mark uh -huh. was. He was a Greek, Greek or something. Is he wasn't Jewish? He he was. His father was Greek. No. Google works. No, I don't. I don't think his father was Greek. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, I think Mark was also was also Jewish, wasn't he? Okay. So, do you have your Bibles? After I, I didn't have mine with me. Oh, let me go get it. Shame on you, Bon. Oh. 
Last time I went to get my Bible. Ah, yeah. So, I mean, because we had talked about this before and I said, you know, this is, it's really good to read those intro portions to the chapter. If you have a study Bible, uh -huh. yes, because that tells you, <clears throat> excuse me, it gives you that information there. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Mark. So we've established that <clears throat> Matthew was Jewish. And so what was what's Mark's background? Because this is what helps you, <clears throat> excuse me. This is what helps you to, under, to, to, to get a better understanding of the bent of the book. Because mm -hmm. you know the writers um, context and you know the context of the audience and you can understand understand a little better why the writer may be saying certain things in a certain way. Mm -hmm. The Marx intended readers were the Gentiles also. <clears throat> His intended readers were um, um, hearers. The intended hearers of the workers remember these, you know, these these stories were were first carried orally. They were not written down for a long time. Right. So his original audience wouldn't have been reading anything. That's the first thing we have to re remember about the Bible. Yes. These stories were all carried orally because there were only certain people who could read and write. Who were they? Uh -huh. They they scribes and. Some... The scribes and the scribes. Exactly. So, so people heard these stories. These were all stories that were told, sermons that were preached, whatever you want to call them. And so we have to be, you know, aware of the person who is responsible, who is claimed as the writer. Yeah. Like we don't know for sure. I think I said this in our first session. We don't know for sure that these were actually the writers. Right. We only know that these are the stories from those people. It, at least these stories are attributed to those people. Yeah. Because did Matthew, Matthew who was, who was Jewish, did he actually know Greek? You know, when it was first recorded, when these, when these, the original, the original recordings of these gospels was in Greek. Did Matthew actually know Greek? Or did someone listen to Matthew telling the stories and recorded it in Greek? So come on, somebody. What was, I, Mark, I'm try, what was yeah, Mark's I, background? It's, Pastor, I'm trying to, 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 to get to get it together here. Come on, Jessica. <laughs> Is Jessica see, on? See, Jessica, I see you're here. Come on. Um, the, I know, oh, well. He's saying that Peter brought him to Christ. I don't. Uh, I could have sworn I saw this somewhere. No. I'm, I'm sure you have seen this. Somewhere. Yes, I mean, I mean, very what? Yeah, his background, but I can't find it now. 
Well, I know Mark followed uh, Peter, and he interpreted for Peter. Yes. Oh boy, but but well, Pastor, why don't you just break the the the, the um what you call it? not the silence the um give me the word and tell us the suspense. <laughs> so here, I mean, so the thing is, Mark's gospel. So first, know this: Mark's gospel was the first. Um. It's considered to be the first gospel that was written. Oh, okay. And so it, um, it says here, this is from my textbook. Mm -hmm. Now, my Jewish name was John, though, wasn't it, Pastor? Uh, that's John was his Jewish name. Um, all right, now you're gonna make me uh oh <laughs> I I don't I don't that is not something that I know off the top of my head. And I mean anybody else who knows any of this stuff, you can feel you don't have to wait for me to answer if you know you can in certainly Rome, chime you can certainly in, chime in. In Rome he was mocked. In Jews, in Jewish times, he was uh, he was uh, Mark was the name for the, that he used as as a Roman, and John was the name he used as a Jew. I didn't even know that, John. I didn't know that. No. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't see that mentioned in any of my notes. Hmm. It's just that the reason why I mean the reason why this gospel was recorded in 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 Greek is mm -hmm. because Mark um Mark lived Mark lived in Rome at that time. I say, it, it, yeah, you may have, it may have been the first of the four gospel. Um, my son. God, I uh, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm it looking, says, it says so. So Mark. here's so here's his his name. It says you know so widespread evidence from the early fathers affirms that Peter passed on reports of the words and deeds of Jesus to his mm -hmm. writer John Mark. Mark John Mark. Yeah, he said he was his, his spiritual hold, son too. Yeah, hold on. Uh, of particular significance in in this regard are brief statements by Bishop Heriopolis. Um, blah 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 blah. Get to the point. Um, Papias states that he received oral tradition from John the Elder and Apostle, and he passes on the following regarding Mark. He was the writer for Peter. He wrote down accurately as much as he could remember of Peter's words, which the latter had adopted to the needs of the moment. Mm -hmm. He was not an eyewitness of Jesus, right. nor was he a disciple. Mm -hmm. It was his desire not to omit or misrepresent anything. The Gospel of Mark gains its apostolic and reliable calendar ca character from... It's Petrine or, origin, you know, it's origin from Peter. Mm -hmm. Internal evidence supports the patristic testimony that Peter stands behind Mark's gospel. Mark's account is especially vivid <clears throat> when recounting incidents involving Peter. And this is true. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it presents the weaknesses of Peter as well as the disciples as a whole. 
and omits praiseworthy and or, or noticeable references to Peter reported in Matthew and Luke. It has also been observed that there exists a certain structural proximity between Peter's Caesarea speech and the Gospel of Mark. So, so Mark was not a disciple. No. No. And Mark was not Jewish. Mark was a scribe, probably that Peter met in Rome. Yeah, it, it says that Mark, it says here, might say that the Roman church consisted of mostly Gentiles. So there was no need for Mark to invest a lot of words explaining Jewish tradition. Right. So, so I would take it then that he was a Gentile. I, right. I mean, no, that that's true, but that's what I'm saying. Like you know, but but in order to when you're when you're studying the Bible, any book of the Bible, it's important to know who the author was and why they came to write that. And so, reading those intro things in the beginning of the books, which most people do not do, I do, is important because it gives you an insight into the into the the bent of that particular book of the bible yeah so now so go let's go back to where what question were we on now i forget where we were, we were on, we were on um, 18. 18. Yeah. why might some readers be uncomfortable with john's account of jesus cleansing the temple how do you feel about it differences among the gospel accounts are they accidental or intentional so if we look at those page at that page, page 31, for those of you who have it, and if you don't have um if you haven't purchased the book that we're using, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13, Mark 11, verses 15 through 17. Luke 19, verses 45 and 46, and John 2, verses 12 through 22. Uh, uh, Pastor, there's a, a, um, a footnote um, italicized at the bottom. It yeah, says yeah. Matthew, huh? Yeah, go ahead. You can, go ahead and it read says, it. It says Matthew, Mark, and Luke shows Jesus cleansing the temple toward the end of his ministry. Whereas John relates a nearly identical incident at the beginning. Right. Did Jesus change the temple twice or did the divine author inspire John or the others to present it out of chronological order? Strong arguments can be presented, but it must remain a mystery until God's due time for us to know. So, and so, I mean, like I'm, that, that footnote is, is good, but it doesn't really tell me anything. I mean, really. It, well, it's, it's saying that. It, they, go ahead. It is saying that the, Ma Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, they, they spoke about the cleansing at the, the, at the um, towards the end of Jesus's ministry. Right. And, and you can see that from where it's located, but Mark is talking right. about it right. I, I mean, John is talking about it right at the beginning. So uh -huh. the question is, why might readers be uncomfortable with John's account of Jesus cleansing the temple? So who was just it was go back was we we talked about this last time as well. Who is John's audience? Uh, 
dance audience. Hmm. They're Jews. Jews. Dance audience for the Jews. Jews. And and so knowing that, why would they be uncomfortable with John's account? Because when John went in to clean up the temple because they were selling and and, and pocketing overcharging the people. Right. We know what they were doing. Why would this why would this account make those people uncomfortable? Because Just they're so. cutting into their, their finances. No, 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 no. Going, no. No, you're missing the you're missing the point. And I and I just preached about this not too long ago. <laughs> Jessica. Oh. I have to find my my notes, Pastor, for that. <laughs> when I was jotting down your notes, notes from your sermons. Go ahead, Jessica. So I'm thinking of the position of the the story in the gospel. So if John's saying that this happened early on in Jesus's ministry, there in the text, it says, do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. So I'm thinking you have this man early on in his ministry before he's done all these other things that is identifying himself as the son of God, which is anti-Jewish. <laughs> yeah. No, you can say that. That's one way of putting it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think it's just the placement of it because first, it's being done during the Passover, which is a big deal, and so everything that Jesus is doing is against the Jewish law. It's That's against probably. law and tradition. Yeah. That's, that's why they would be upset with it. That's the biggest reason why they would be upset with it. It was totally against law and tradition. So it's like, it's not even about the time placement, really. It's like, you know, so who are you you know, nobody from Nazareth <laughs> or or Beth, who can anything good come out. Who are you to come in here and start upsetting the whole works? Like we're cool with this whole procedure. This Hi. is this is what we do. We are okay with this. And now you're going to come in here and say that we shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, you know they were going to kill him then. <laughs> He's so, their so money. So not only are the money changers upset, yes, because like now he's cutting into he's cutting it's into profit. their finances, as as Jessica said. But then the people who are going to temple, they're like, this is the way we do it. We buy our little doves and whatever else we have to buy outside, and we come in here because this is how we're going to be cleansed. This is how we're going to be forgiven. We got to bring our sacrifices. And now you're disrupting the whole thing. It's like, what am I going to do? I can't go back home without being forgiven. So it's upset on all sides. And also, Pastor, with Christ coming, there would be no need anymore for sacrifices and blood from the animals and all of that stuff. Exactly. So what's his way of saying no more of this, not right. needed. Right. And then, I mean, so when you look at the when you look at the other accounts, they are brief. Yes. He went in Luke. He entered into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it. Yeah. Saying to them, yeah. it is written, "My house is a house of prayer." But you have made it a den of robbers. Well, that's but pretty John great. Detailed. <laughs> you know, and the other accounts are very brief. Yeah. And and so and so that says to you 
like those people, th this particular incident probably was not important to that audience that these people were speaking to. Mm, right. For John, it was important that they know every little detail about what happened that day. I'm going to tell you chapter and verse verbatim exactly what happened because it's important for you to know this. Right. And and then, and Pastor, when you said that, uh, what made them upset to he said, destroy this temple. He said, I destroyed this temple in three days. And they said, what? It took 40 something years to build it. To build it, you know, exactly. What are you talking? You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But he was talking about his his body. Yeah, exactly. he was talking about yeah, he was talking about his the He's resurrection. About his right. body. He was he, he was, he was telling them about himself, about him. but yeah. they but they didn't, they, they didn't no, know they that took it yet. literally. They right. thought he was going to destroy the temple, actually destroy it. Very interesting, Pastor. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and so this is Very again, you've heard me say this over and over again. Yeah. And before we get through this, you'll hear me say it probably a hundred more times. Mm. This is why it is important for us not to read the Bible literally. Literally. There are so many metaphors. There's so much that is descriptive, not prescriptive. Mm-hmm. And 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 you so you can't just take what's there on the page at face value because we are not the people right. that this was for that this was I mean truly I don't believe that any of I mean of course none of these writers meant it for us 21st century people. Hmm. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have implication and meaning for us today. Uh, we have to understand that these words that are there were not written to us or, or even for us. I don't think the writers had that in mind. So, um, so yeah. Next, um, next question, 19. Only John, really, and this is from this Sunday's text. Only John relates Nicodemus's visit with Jesus. Why is this account so important? And wow, we're that's the last question for week one, and we're only on week four. <laughs> <laughs> so why why was it important for for John? Why do you think that? This account of of Jesus and Nicodemus is so important to to John. Okay, so I'm late to the party. <laughs> How no, you're not. Oh, Rona. Ah, <laughs> Rona. Sherry. So it, I'm reading now, it says he's only mentioned three times in a gospel of John, but he, later he reminds the Pharisees that under Jewish law, Jesus should be granted a hearing before he's condemned. And he finally brings ointments to assist in Jesus' burial. So, I mean, so Nicodemus was important, true, but here's the question. Why is this account, why is it important that we even know anything about Nicodemus? Much less all this stuff. I mean, it goes on. You know, he goes on from the end, from, from the beginning. I mean, it's chapter three. It pretty much takes up the whole chapter three. So why why was that important? Why was it important to John that we know that we know about Nicodemus and his visit with Jesus and all these little intricate details that he gives us? Was it because he was trying to let him know he had to be born again and then he had to explain what he meant by being born again because Nicodemus could only 
think no. You're you're re, you're on the surface. <laughs> dig, dig, dig deeper. You're you're just that's what the surface is telling us. But there's a reason why this was important for John to tell this story. Because Nicodemus was 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 a, a Pharisee. And, and Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and what happened? And he realized who Jesus was. That's what I took from it. Yes. He, 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 yeah. He so he firmly established Christ as the Savior of man. Yes, but but the key here is Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews. He was a Pharisee. Yes. Yeah. And the Pharisees were doing what? They, they, they are the ones that was doing the persecution um, of Jesus. They are yeah, the ones, right. yeah. Right. Yes, yes. So it was important to John to tell his Jewish brothers and sisters, look. It's the Savior. Nicodemus, Nicodemus, one of yeah. our esteemed leaders, mm -hmm. could and understand yeah. that this truly was the Messiah then you guys need to get it together. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's you, what I got. You need to jump on. You need to jump on this I'm bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's why that's why that story was important to John and it doesn't appear in any other gospel, right? No. He's the only one that speaks on Nicodemus. Exactly. So the other thing that 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 we should be taking away from this study is that because for for a long time, and I know this was my <laughs> this was something that I thought too. It's like all the gospels are telling the same story, and if you condense it, they are telling a story. Jesus came, you know, Jesus was born, Jesus lived, Jesus died to save us all. I mean, like that's the condensed story, right? Yeah. But the all four gospels tells this story in a very different way for some very distinct reasons. And that's the purpose of studying, to dig into why. Why is it said differently? It's not that one is true and one is false. They're all true. So okay, before we before we uh, move ourselves into week two and the questions in week two, is there anything hanging out for anybody from that from those first nineteen questions for week one? Pastor, unfortunately, I don't have week two. What happened there? Uh, I sent it today. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. <laughs> It was in today's email. Did everybody else? Did, did everybody else get it? I, huh? Yvonne, Yvonne is a little challenged when it comes to this. Did everybody else get get the week two questions today? Okay. I have the question because it it could be me. I I could have thought no, I said no, it. No, I, no, the, the no, I didn't even look pastor. for that. Oh, I I just jumped on on the Zoom to you know I had I had printed the first week. And I remember you saying that it, you weren't finished, so I just brought the first week's paper. I didn't bother to look for the second week. Oh, okay. You know, and, and I have to print it because I, I I use my phone, so that's you know you know I'm challenged. You know you know that. You know. That's, that's what I said. Mine is challenged. Now I <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're gonna start with um the first question. John's gospel provides what additional information about John the baptizer? What's that again, Pastor? So John's gospel provides mm -hmm. what additional information about John the baptizer? And that's on pages 34 and 35. Okay.
Pastor, what is the question? Because I can't correct the I can't correct the uh, questions because my printer is all whatever. What a, in John's Gospel? John's Gospel provides what additional information about John the Baptizer? Okay. What additional? Uh, it uh it talk talk about um uh but about let me see therefore when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John although Jesus himself didn't baptize but his disciples but that that um he was in prison. No. Uh, I mean, they they all they they all mention him being in prison at 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 some point or. Um, I talk about the baptism of the, um, uh, that 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 um, the Lord knew that Christ had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although Jesus himself did not baptize. Nobody has talked about the baptism of the disciples. Exactly. He talks and John and John goes to great. I mean, John goes to great length. I mean, starting in John on on, on page 34. In, in, uh, in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 22, after these things, Jesus came with his disciples to the land of Judea. He stayed there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing. So none of the other Gospels talks about Jesus baptizing. No. And then they don't give this, this long discourse about what transpired between John and Jesus. No wonder he's the disciples that Jesus loved. <laughs> he was detailed. He was very detailed. Yes. Jessica. Anyway. It, it's fascinating because what John doesn't do is talk about John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. And I think the reason that this that John's so different from the other three is because in John, you get like this very spirit filled story of Christ. So he's not going to emphasize John baptizing him because Jesus is the ultimate baptizer. So like he's not going to emphasize the fact that John is a baptizer. That's not important to John, the writer. It's the spirit. And so that's all that John is doing this whole time is he's like, reminding us that you can compare all these other people to Jesus, but Jesus is the ultimate baptizer. Jesus is the ultimate healer. Jesus is the ultimate everything else. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Jessica. Rona? Um, you, did you want to say something? Oh, nothing. I unmuted myself accidentally. I was talking okay. to myself and Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And so now this next section. Oh, so, is, so Pastor, before ahead. you go. Uh -huh. um, so what would you say, John? Um, spoke more about um, the divinity of Jesus, I mean, as opposed to the others, you know, it's... Well, no, I'm not going to say that. I, I'm, I'm not going to say that because they all sp spoke about the divinity of Jesus. 
It's the detail that John gives. That's that that's the important thing here. I mean, John goes to great lengths. And why is that? I mean, keep going. You have to keep circling back to the reason. Why does John go to great lengths to add all these details? We just said it. Like, you mean what Jessica said about... Um... You know, Jesus being the ultimate baptizer. No, no, no. Who is John writing? Who? Audience. Jews. To, to the Jews. Yes. To the Jews. To the Jews. So that's what that that is why John takes these pains to go into all these details because he wants these people to really understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecy. It's like, you know, you people are looking for the Messiah. This is the Messiah. So he goes to great pains to put all these, all these stories in there to try to help them to see that what they're looking past is right in front of their faces. So are we good to go to question two? Yep. Okay, and so what additional information or what information is uh, about Jesus' encounter with the Samaritans? So what is it? What is it about this whole encounter with the Samaritan? And, uh, you know, which, I mean, it's called Encounter with the Samaritans, but actually this is an encounter with the uh, Syrophoenician woman. It's the woman. Mostly. Um, and so wh why, why is this so important? To so, show um, that, that Jesus... Um, regarded women, you know, not because he, 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 in, 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 in their culture, in the Jewish culture, women were not regarded. regarded. And, 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 but Jesus is, 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 you know, is, is showing, you know, how important women how important women women how important women are in 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 maybe spreading the gospel no because, because no, 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 because no 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 because when this when again don't put your 21st century meaning on top of this story that was written before any of that stuff was known don't do that. The woman was no angel. Didn't she have five husbands? No, this that has no, that 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 may have something to do with it, but it's not about her not being an angel. It's not about her being a bad person. It's not Jessica. Go ahead. Oh, don't disagree with Miss Yvonne and um, Mr. Reggie, but not only was she. Well, not only is Jesus a Jewish man talking to a woman the way he's talking to her and a woman with five deceased or whatever husbands and whatever, but she's also a Samaritan. And like, aren't Jews not feeling any other race except for their own? So like for him okay. to be a casual- Okay, okay. right there. Know? So here's the thing. Yes, she's a woman and, and what she had done, how many husbands she had Though all those things, none of those things are the point here. John describes all those things 
for for the exact same reason that the same thing you guys are going for you're going for the obvious thing well she was the tramp what's well, like like that that's why but no she was number one she was she was an outcast yes because if she wasn't an outcast she would have been getting water in the morning like all the other women i'm gonna tell you yeah. right She's out there in the heat of the middle of the day, the, day. the hottest part of the day by herself getting water that she needs for her sustenance. Mm -hmm. So that says to you, she is an outcast. She's a total outcast to her own people. people. So she must like take he was the time. Rona, it yeah. It sounds like he was being compassionate regardless of exactly Jesus doing. takes the time to talk to this woman who is a total outcast not only from him because with him being Jewish he shouldn't have been talking to her anyway because she she Samaritans and Jews just do not communicate with each other right. period that's forbidden mm -hmm. but Jesus is talking to her and she's like the outcast of the outcast and not only is he talking to her, but he's compassionate and he cares. And he tells her all about herself. And then what happens? She, she went into the town and told them about the, the prophet that she met. Yes. So what does that say? What does that say to the Jewish people? That that the Gentiles no. <laughs> that, it's not that complicated, we, people. Are we all the same that God treats, treats us all the same, Jews as well as Americans? There you go. Yeah, the Jews and Gentiles. There you go. They, 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 yeah, they're treated. God sees them in the same. To God, there is no difference. No Greek, no Jews, no male, no female. And and in order to That's illustrate that to you, I'm going to tell you. You know, it's just like if you know you're sitting down, you're talking to your kids, and you tell them. You know, look, this is this is what happened and this is why it happened. But to prove that to you, I'm going to tell you this story. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. And so that's what John does. He gives this example. And so, oh, so you think that you're the only ones entitled to this? No, let me tell you something. This, this is what Jesus did. But it was for everyone. Exactly that it was for everyone. And she, and he so impressed her that, that I want some of that water. I want, I that, want, living, I want that. that living water that will not, so that I will never thirst again. That's I amazing. want that. Cause you know what? It is hot coming out here in the middle of the day trying to get <laughs> this water. But she, she thought it was the water water. <laughs> No, but then, but then she came to realize yes, she did. that what he was talking about, that the water was just a metaphor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so then she went and spread that word. By the time we get to the end of this, you guys are going to be teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, I'm, you know, it's like, you the, the the big thing to hold on to, like I said, is you know who who is the person who is the author, supposedly, because the author probably was not the person who scribed it, who actually wrote it down. But who is the author? What is what was who was the audience? Because that is what will help you understand why the story is being told the way it's being told. And then after you, after you get that in its context, then you can find some meaning for it for today. 
-hmm. But we can't just look at it with our post-resurrection and 21st century eyes. That is never going to tell us the whole story. But she also mentioned the Messiah to him also. And he says, well, you're speaking to, I am the Messiah, you're speaking to him. Right. Right. She got a revelation. And also, also the disciples don't know, why, you, why is he talking to this woman? Well, yeah, because they're, they're like, look, Jesus, <laughs> like, you, knew, you, you, knew you are just, to. which, which truthfully, um, and I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't used this term in a, in a sermon in a while. It might be coming up on Sunday. So you, you heard it here first. I mean, one of my favorite terms for the disciples are the 12 doofuses. Yeah. I mean, it's like, they, 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 it's like, I'm like over and over again. I'm like. Seriously, guys, you see this stuff happening over and over again. Why haven't you gotten it yet? They are just so doofus. So doofus. <laughs> I can't think of another word for them over and over again. But and you they're know, also they, I mean, trying they to get finally they finally did get it because if they hadn't we wouldn't be we wouldn't be talking about this, right? So they finally did get it. But I'm like over and over again, they say, so just like uh, this, you know, they say, hey man, why are you talking to her? It's like, this is not what you should be doing. <laughs> You're totally out, totally out of line here. <laughs> and they're <laughs> trying to get him to eat and he said, I don't need that food. It, yeah, yeah. I don't need that food. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, um, <laughs> I think that's, this is a good place for us to end tonight. So we'll pick up with question three of week two. All right, I'm going to get my print. Hmm. Next week, that's where we'll pick up. And um, and like I said, for those of us who joined a little late, if you purchased this book, no, not that book, this book. <laughs> I only have like four or five books here that I'm going back and forth between, plus a couple of things on my computer. But if you purchase this book, which is the one I recommended, the page numbers that are on the questions correlate to the pages in your book. Yeah. So that might help you, um, that may help you as you try to formulate, you know, the answers to, to some of these questions. But we will start with question three next week. Question three on week two. Okay. And if anyone, and if anyone was not here in, in the first couple of weeks and you didn't get, I sent a synopsis of the four gospels and something else. But if you didn't get those things and you want them, just send me an email and let me know and I'll, I'll send them to you because I didn't include them. Um, I didn't include them this time because I, I had already sent them out a couple of times. So if you didn't get those, just send me a quick email and, and I'll send them to you. But yeah, this is this is good. And I say, you know, just just as you are reading and studying, just keep in mind two things. What are they? The audience was different. Who? No, not the audience was different. Who was the audience? Who was the audience? Yeah. And? <laughs> and? Do not apply the 21st century. No, 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 no. <laughs> Who was the audience and? Who was the writer? Yes. Because you, you, if you know the, who the writer was and the background of the writer, you know why it's important to that writer to say certain things. <clears throat> so 
so those those are the two two main things. You know, there there are other little nuances to look at as well, but those are the two main things. If you can keep those in mind as you read and study, it will become apparent to you why a certain writer says a certain thing a certain way. Okay. Or why as John, you know, as with John, that there's so many things that are more important to John than it seems that to other writers because he wants his Jewish folks to understand, look, you need to get all these little nuances because y'all y'all are the ones who who stood there and said crucify him. Uh-huh. And 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 you need to understand exactly what you were doing. And he wanted them to know that the Messiah, that the Messiah is here. I am the Messiah. I am here. And he wanted them to, to know that and understand that. And they're still looking. Well, I mean, well, I mean, by the time this was by the time this was written and these stories were being told, the Messiah had already the, the resurrection had happened a long time. Ago. Happened. But he's he's telling the stories because, you know, what if once once the resurrection happened, it wasn't like everybody said, Oh yeah, wow, we're gonna jump on board. No. no. No, no, no. I mean, because you have to remember in history, plenty of those first Christians, what they were martyred, they were yeah. persecuted. Yeah. You know, the Jewish people, they didn't get it right away. Yes. So we, we also have to hold intention. You know, there is real history here. Yes. And there were real, you know, they, there were things that were happening in history. We can't throw that out. And Pastor, I just look at the two main things in John's gospel to me was the first, the chapter one, verse one, that in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God. And he had an understanding of that. When the others really didn't have that understanding. I don't think well, they no, had that I don't, and Sherry, I'm not gonna agree with you on that, that they didn't have that understanding. It was not important for them to say that. It was important for John to say it because he was Jewish and he was talking to the Jews and the Jews knew scripture upside down, inside out. So they knew all those things. And so it was important for John to say that, to lend credibility to everything else that he said to them. Mm -hmm. And if you were writing to, you know, as 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 the other gospel writers, you know, are writing talking to Gentiles, Gentiles don't care. They don't know Jewish history. They you know, like that is totally unimportant to them. You have to like it's you know about meeting people where they are. Right. Okay. And so when that's what happens in Scripture, we have to understand that what was written, most of it was meeting whoever that audience was where they were. Mm to help them to understand the total big picture of who God is, was, and what happened through Jesus. And then to me, John 3.16 is very important. It's all important. It is, but I'm just saying, I just, it's just something about that God so loved that he that he gave the ultimate gift that he could give, which was mm -hmm. his son. Yeah. Let's so, keep just, so just hold those things in mind as you, you know, as you as you feel, because I know you all are as you feverishly try to get some of the answers for next week during the week. <laughs> hold those things in 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 mind. Um, because those are the things that really help you to get down to um, the true what the what the author was trying to convey in this particular scripture. And and unfortunately, for so for so many of us, mm -hmm. the way scripture has been handed down to us and interpreted for us. Is nothing like what you're hearing now.
because these are, you know, and, you know, these are things that just weren't given to us. So we will keep studying together, and I'm so glad you keep showing up. So, yeah. uh, so we're starting at which question next week? Week two, question three. 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 Question, question three? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where we'll begin. I got a lot of notes to write down. <laughs> <laughs> keep writing, Sherry. <laughs> But that's that's where well, we would begin it's next what week. You, and what we just did. What's that? I said that was a lot of meaning. What we just did. Yes, and we aren't even work. and we aren't even delving deep into the scripture. You know, like I mean, we could this story. I mean, like I said, this you know, some whoever suggested suggested this, and I thought yeah. I said, well, yeah, we could do that in about three months. And then I as I started so. doing my own study to prepare, I'm like, no, we can't. This is going to be, this is, this is going to end up, this, this can end up being like a year's worth of study. It is. Just, yeah. just this. And, and again, we're not delving deeply into the scripture. We're just looking at the things that are different, comparing them and understanding why they're there. Yeah. And we're not really digging into the scripture itself. You can go back and do that on your own. Right. <laughs> uh huh. And Pastor, you know, the beginning of this book, it tells us why the four Gospels. It explain. It went through a lot of what you, what you have, the questions you have asked us. It's in the the forefront of this it's book. In, it's in, yeah, that's why I said it was. I said before we began that it was good to read that. Read that intro. It at the front of the book. It had a lot of it, a lot of things that you were <laughs> asking us. <laughs> Yep. So thank you all for being here uh, tonight and 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 through, through the past weeks and I hope and hopefully through the coming coming weeks, you yeah. know, encourage encourage your other uh, friends and yeah. good family to to, to join come. in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So the Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. With you. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this gathering. God, we thank you for this opportunity to to get a a, a deeper understanding of of Scripture and 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 your Word that was written so long ago. That I mean, folks thought it was so important to tell these stories, God, and we are thankful that they are still here for us today to help us to know better what Jesus did when while He walked this earth, God. So be with us as we continue in this study. Open our hearts and our minds so that we can get the messages from the ancients passed on to us, God, and, and apply it to our lives today. God, I ask that you be with us all as we separate from one another virtually and move into the rest of our evening, God. Let our night be restful and let our day tomorrow be full of joy and sunshine. These and all things we look to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Amen. Have Thank a good night. Thank you. Have a good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Everybody have a good night. You too. Bye. Jessica, you still there? No, she's gone. She's gone. <laughs> Where'd Reggie go? Reggie cut out on us. Reggie was Reggie was with us tonight. His yeah, his picture, his his um, his video is still on, but he hasn't been around for several minutes. I, I don't know where he went, but I'm gonna end the meeting. So I'm sure he'll see that when he comes back to his computer. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Joby. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Goodwine.